हेलो एवरीवन वेरी गुड इवनिंग टुडे वील डिस्कस आवर प्रोन वेंटिलेशन सेकेंड क्लास इन द फर्स्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस अबाउट द फिजियोलॉजी एंड द बेनिफिट नाउ वील डिस्कस द प्रैक्टिकल एस्पेक्ट हाउ टू डू इट हाउ टू एकॉम्प्लिश ए प्रोन वेंटिलेशन लेट अस डिस्कस प्रोन वेंटिलेशन राइट सो वॉट आर द इंडिकेशन राइट वेन टू डू इट so first we'll discuss when to do it right number 1 point not immediately after stabilizing for at least 10 to 12 hour using lung protective ventilation after that also if the patient is having after this if pf ratio is less than 150 fio2 is more than 0.6 pp is more than 10 then consider for proning and there is no absolute no absolute contraindication to prone if you think that your patient may benefit from proning then you must do proning right there may be one condition where it is absolutely contraindicated that will be chest trauma patient has a open thorax or patient has suffered a tbi with high intracranial pressure so these are the situation you may consider not doing the prone ventilation but otherwise there is no absolute contraindication to prone all are related contraindications so when you do proning proning has to be done 16 hours a day with 8 hours supine and it can be done for consecutive 28 days maximum right this is what the prosaba group of people they have done right so when to do it these are the indications contraindications how long in a j and for how many days it can be done right second question is how to do it how to do it of course there are thousands of videos in the youtube you can see practically how to do it the simulation videos they are very very important i am just only mentioning the idea the concept behind proning how to do and what are the things to look for when you are proning a patient right so number 1 point will be it requires 3 to 4 people so the first or the one, uh, number 1 people he will stay at head head position and what he will do he will do three things he will take care of the head of the patient second he will take care of the et tube third he will take care of the ventilator tubings right the number 2 and 3 person what they will do other people or doctors they will stand by or nurses by the sides and they will take care of the lines different lines the patient may be having central line atrial line foley's catheter rails to everything so they will take care of this number 4 is the direction of movement so direction of movement depends upon the placement of central venous catheter lines if it is on the right side then patient has to be moved 
to right side horizontally right side horizontally right side of the bed right so towards the edge of the bed once it is done then the patient is turned sagittally i'll explain how when the patient is on a sagittal position it is at that time attach the electrodes on the back and apply a new bed sheet right and lastly when it is done prone 180 degrees so let us explain this in detail so the patient is lying on the bed head this side and legs on the opposite side and let's for example imagine the central venous catheter is on the right femoral right so it is on the right side so what we will do we will move the patient in the bed towards the right edge horizontally towards the right edge horizontally once it is on the right side of the edge then this if this is the if this is the patient now it is on the right side of the edge then we will turn the patient in a sagittal direction like this so now the patient is in a transverse position in relation to the bed of the hospital so now because the patient is in the transverse position in relation to the bed now we can attach the electrodes on the back side and put a pillow cover put a fresh bed sheet and then we can 180 degree prone the patient now the patient will automatically come to the middle of the bed right so in this way we do it now what are the things to look for here so number 5 pressure points so pressure points has to be padded what are the pressure points we have knee we have chest we have eyes forehead abdomen no you do not need any cushion for the abdomen it's not required so these are the four points we really need to be careful of and every 2 hour move the head or neck both ways if the head is towards right side for the first 2 hour move it to the left side for the next 2 hour like that because otherwise it will produce torticollis right so these are the things you have to be careful when we are coning the patient right now how to assess the patient when it, he is prone so the third question is how to assess so before putting the patient on prone ventilation during prone ventilation we have to what will be the ventilator settings the ventilator settings will be as discussed in our previous discussion lung protective ventilation so a tidal volume of 6 ml per kg of ideal body weight we have to target a p plat of less than 30 cm water we have to target a ph of 7.20 to 7.45 right so that is the way we have to adjust the respiratory rate also to all these things and these things are dynamic right this is not a static thing that we have discussed in our previous discussion these things are dynamic so it will change depending upon the change in respiratory mechanics of the patient that we have discussed how the air addition net protocol people have done if there is acidosis you have to increase the rate sometimes you have to, you have to add bicarbonate if the pp plat is high decrease the tidal volume by 1 that we have all discussed in a previous class right so this is the way even when the patient is in prone position we have to follow all the guidelines that has been set beforehand right now second point is how to assess while patient is on prone position so we have to assess the p plat sorry the p plat and abg how frequently so first is 
in supine condition. So the passion fast will be optimized or stabilized. In at that time, you have to have an AVG on the basis of that AVG only we are putting the patient in the prone position. Second is second check will be done just prior to proning. So third is one hour into proning, and fourth just before supining and fifth four hour into supine right so these are the time when we have to check for the p flat and the avg for p flat we have and avg we have to adjust the ventilator settings accordingly right number three will be right when to stop proning when everything is going good that means when the patient's pf ratio is more than 150 fiu2 is less than 0.6 p is less than 5 uh, sorry less than 10 it is at this time and it is sustained it is sustained for four hour when patient in supine from last prone season. So we have proned the patient. Now the patient is supine, and the PF ratio is like this, and it is sustained for four hour in the supine position. It is at this time there is no need to further prone. So no need to further prone the patient. Now you can think about winning. Right? What are the other situations when we have to start thinking about stopping proning? That is negative. When things are not going in a good direction. Right? For example, when the PF ratio deteriorates actually. Deteriorates on proning. The PF ratio deteriorates on proning, right? So the PF ratio on supine we have measured, and while percentage on prone, it decreases by 20%. That means this percentage is prone non-responder, and and this proning is the second proning. So whatever be the result you have to give one 16 hour, hour of proning right in the second time when the patient is prone if the pf ratio decreased by 20 percent these are called prone non-responder they are back to supine and prognosis is worse for them. and third when to stop proning when there is complication right what are the complications we are discussing about number one there is accidental extubation. Number two, there is endobronchial migration of tube. Number three, there is cardiac arrest. Number four, the systolic blood pressure is less than 60 for five minutes. Heart rate less than 30 for 60 second right and PO2 less than 55 SPO2 less than 85 for 5 minute so these are the situation when you actually want no proning is not helping we have to immediately supine the patient right so to achieve a ideal prone ventilation setting last but very very important Neuromuscular blocking for at least 48 hour is a must. Right. So whatever we discussed, all these are based on the very famous trial called the Proceva trial. Right. And it has shown a mortality benefit, a significant mortality benefit among patients 
who are hospitalized for ARDS when they're prone for 16 hours a day for 28 days consecutively there is a significant mortality benefit so in our patient when we have started on lung protective ventilation but the patient is not benefiting from it 10 to 12 hour has been passed this is the best recruitment maneuver that we can do so if your patient can be prone he should be prone this is the message from this class thank you very much